Russian officials will this morning appear in The Hague to object to the International Court of Justice hearing Ukraine's allegations against the country. Key filed the case shortly after Russia's invasion in February of last year, accusing Moscow of falsely using genocide law to justify the attack. Russia says the World Court has no jurisdiction to weigh in on the matter. Well, live now to The Hague, and let's speak to our foreign correspondent, Anna Holligan. Hello there to you, Anna. Um, I wonder if you could just take us through the timeline of how we got here. Yes, um, I'm outside the UN's highest court now. You can see it's also a popular tourist attraction. The hearing has just started. So Russia and Ukraine, lawyers in court, side by side, arguing their cases. We're hearing, first of all, from Russia. So how did we get here? Well. A few days after Russian tanks rolled across the border, Ukraine brought this case to the International Court of Justice, claiming that Russia was abusing the Genocide Convention by uh, claiming falsely a genocide was being committed in eastern Ukraine in order to try to justify what Russia called the special military operation. So the case was brought here to the ICJ. Um, the month, a month later, March 2022, judges here uh, issued an interim ruling in which they said Russia should cease all covert and overt hostilities and that both sides should avoid any action that could escalate the situation. So where we are today, this is potentially a pivotal moment because Russia is arguing the ICJ doesn't have the power, doesn't have the jurisdiction to hear this case because under the genocide convention under which Ukraine, Kyiv brought this case, there is no dealing with the use of force between states. So that's the argument we're going to be hearing from Russia's lawyers today. Um, just how much jurisdiction though does the court have and in terms of enforcement, you know, what options are there? Both very good questions. So um, both countries, uh, Russia and Ukraine, are signed up to the Genocide Convention. So in that sense, if the judges decide they have jurisdiction to hear this case, uh, they have ju jurisdiction over both countries. However, with that interim ruling, we know the hostilities continued. So Russia uh, ignored that ruling in March 2022. In terms of enforcement powers, um, well, actually none. Um, if the judges decide they have jurisdiction and if eventually, probably we're talking years in the future, they rule in Ukraine's favour that Russia had falsely used claims of a geno genocide in order to justify the full-blown invasion, there are no enforcement powers. They could escalate the case to the UN Security Council, but of course Russia has a, a veto power there. I've been speaking to some um, international legal experts though and they say if the judges find in Ukraine's favour it could help with any uh, future reparations claims from the victims. The other thing to bear in mind, interesting in this case, is on Wednesday we'll be hearing from the 32 countries which have intervened in this case. So they've essentially supported Ukraine's position and they will be presenting their arguments on Wednesday. And the other thing to bear in mind is that with any uh, case like this in international justice, rulings set precedent. So any decisions here at the ICJ could be used in other cases, for example, separate cases at the International Criminal Court, which is also here in The Hague, and another case which is being heard um, here at the International Court of Justice involving Russia and Ukraine. And, and very quickly, Anna, in terms when we, you know, reflecting on accountability, would that lie directly with President Putin? And what other precedents have been set in this court where countries or leaders, their leaders, have been found accountable of genocide? Good question. So um, this is the International Court of Justice. It's the UN's highest court and it deals with disputes between states. So we're not talking about individual criminal responsibility. Just to very quickly remind you, there is a case ongoing at the International Criminal Court, which does deal with individual criminal responsibility. And that case um, is looking at allegations that President Putin and his children's rights commissioner were involved in 
essentially kidnapping Ukrainian children from the uh, areas which have been occupied by Russian forces and taking them across the border illegally into Russia and putting them up for adoption. That case is being dealt with by the ICC. A separate case here at the ICJ uh, involves allegations Russia has been involved in funding terrorist activities in eastern Ukraine. This one today uh, will run until the 27th of September. It's just um, part of the, the proceedings. So it will determine whether or not basically this whole case can, t can continue. If the judges decide they have jurisdiction under the Genocide Convention, uh, then the case will continue. If they rule in Russia's favor that the Genocide Convention doesn't cover this and therefore they don't have a mandate, then uh, the case will be thrown out. Okay, Anna Holligan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.